Hello guys, so uh, this is my first requested video, so I'm very excited. Oh, a quick disclaimer before I start, that I am not a professor or any like member of the board. I'm just a final year student who is like sharing her experience. So if agar koi bhool chuk ho jaye, to maaf kar dena. And yeah, so I have tried to make this proposal. I have made this proposal keeping in mind the ICMR format but you can use it to write any other research proposal but some journals have a fixed way just like ICMR has so in that case you might not apply it but like I have literally said it very broad way mein. and I have made it in such a way you can literally pause this video and write your proposal step by step or pause this PPT and write this proposal step by step my contact details are below so if anyone needs any other help like you asked me to make this video or you want this ppt for yourself to keep while writing you can ask me i'll send it to you <clears throat> so let's get started with the first thing so uh, also yeah you can use it to write any other medical journal because i have used vancouver style of referencing which is very popular in medical journals i'll uh, talk about it uh, properly later so don't so the first thing which many people do is they go to a professor and they are like they hear what topics they can do it in or they choose a very difficult topic you have to understand this is icmr is doing it to promote to show you how research is done it's not a whole phd course so don't choose a topic which is too difficult and also uh, don't get carried away. So professors, they see a lot of students. Some students do it for two years. Some students do it for five years, one year. So you have to tell them, sir, this is two months. Ka, so give me a shorter project or you have to think uh, of a shorter project. And also if you can't think of a shorter project, take a shorter sample size. But mind you, don't do a project where the cell culture takes like three months to be cultured or where the basic uh, oh another thing is the cost of the research is borne by the hospital but mind you icmr will not uh, doesn't approve projects which are very pricey so even if it's government funded you have to think that it is something which is affordable the cost is not like uh, the for example i remember there was somebody whose kit only cost like uh, 60000 or something so in that case the cost is huge so it's it should not be something which an undergraduate student is doing who has no basic funding so mind you this this is very important that the topic is something which can be completed in those two months and also you have to talk to a professor understand that if it's very expensive or something tell them the exact format of the icmr project and your guide will guide you accordingly so you have to be very transparent to your guide okay another thing is uh, icmr gives you a full set of headings for the research proposal i have made this project exactly keeping all those minds uh, the headers are the ones which are used by icmr don't change them don't change the chronology okay don't change don't aisa nahi ho ki, um, you put like implications first me no whatever the order is follow the order follow the exact names Agar if it's written objectives it will be objectives and not aims and objectives okay so don't change it as for the word limits the word limits are very flexible so uh, don't think you oh it's crossing the word limit oh my god what will, what will i do word limits are for give you to have a basic idea for example your introduction should not be of two lines but it also should not be of uh, two pages or 20 pages two pages is all right for three four pages okay it's for you to have an idea ki it can be less uh, 200 words here and there Aisa. and also yeah very important uh, i have had the timestamps attached right go to the references once because the reference in style is called vancouver style so uh, you just hear the referencing slide once so that you can plan the entire project accordingly another thing is don't overlap uh as an you are saying the same thing many times think clearly this i will explain in introduction slide better Title. So the title is 25 words, which basically means don't add a two word heading. There is no hard and fast rule, but uh, it, it should have like action words. It should have words like a study of, or detection of, or assessment of, validation of. For example, suppose, give an example of topic here. Suppose detection of mutations in uh, breast tissue samples for breast carcinoma in um, people below the age of 30. So in that case, your topic should be detection of this. Use the action word. What you are going to do. Don't write ki like uh, breast uh, mutations. Your topic should not be mutations in breast tissue samples in 
breast carcinoma patients below 30 no your topic should be detection of in the same way if you are doing a community medicine based process you should have assessment of or validation of validation of can also mean that suppose there is something which is already established you are uh, clarifying that you are assessing that so it should have access, action words like the few i mentioned they are these cover the most of the topics but even uh, out of that if your topic is different use action words because the title is the one which will first catch the person's attention so as an now they are confused about what you are going to do next we are coming to the introduction now the introduction is 300 words and the introduction of what happens uh, very often is uh, oh please watch the references style before because you need to watch it because otherwise you will have to come back and you will face problem please go to the references slide and watch it and then come back for your benefit only so another thing is, so as I was saying, oh, introduction, a very common problem is you overlap a lot. And that is very weird. Like if I did the same thing in beginning May and last May, it's weird, na? So do clearly divide it into three paragraphs from very before. So in the first paragraph, you can write the background of the research, ki why you are doing it, what is its application in the real world, how it's working, or pehle kya kyo research ho chuka hai, ya what is the status of various uh, of the knowledge okay so first is application in the real world or how you thought about this topic this is the first so here you are not talking about your what you are going to do so there is no overlap the second paragraph is the gap in knowledge Ye kya nahi pata hai? right or uh, is it not verified it can happen there is something not known or there is something not very verified or it is like in your country it is not verified or you so you are getting my point right so here it is the gap of knowledge you are still not talking about your research you are making them think that okay okay so this is what is known and this is what is not known. last me the third one you will have hypothesis your hypothesis your research why you are doing it how will your your research will fill that gap so mind you in the vancouver style put references okay and the references should be in such a way that they don't overlap if, you, if it's overlapping, it's it's not interesting anymore, okay? Make it like a story. The introduction should be a story to read because the first thing that will catch the reader's attention. Next is objectives. Objectives mein khas kuch bolne ka nahi hai. Sometimes we are very confused ki like objectives mein to I have one objective. Uh, how will I make it many? So yeah, here you can divide it into primary and secondary objectives. As in like uh, the thing that what is the various other things you will get to know um, during primary and secondary objectives the primary objective can be like an aim and the secondary objectives are those which you find out while doing this project okay as any you have to give 10,000 objectives can be two one three and that's enough okay methodology this is i think um that one part which is the most um, asked for so uh, the first thing is study design so for study design, you can, you have to, I guess, since we are very new, you have to ask your guide what is the study design. And if you are still confused, if you are doing the project on your own and you still can't figure out, you can ask the community medicine department of college. Ki, uh, if you can uh, tell them, this is my study, can you please guide me about what my study design is and how will we write it? And also the, the same thing applies for last me, you also methodology me, you have to write, I have written that later. Ki the sampling technique, that also, if you are unsure, if uh, you can take the help of your guide and if um, still you, you you are doing it on your own you can't figure it out you can uh, take the help of the community medicine department okay everybody helps you study settings is where you are doing it which department is it hospital based you are doing which department are involved that is the study settings study population is which what is the population is it a general population you are choosing a whole urban population you are choosing the whole rural population or you are choosing uh, OPD patients of a certain uh, department of your college. These, this is the study population. You have to be very specific. It can be uh, if you are doing it among students. It can be students of this college, student of this. Yeah, this is the age group. So you have to talk about the study population. Now you are talking about the main methodology. Many times we get very confused. Ki what is the methodology? So, so the thing is. For most projects, you have taking consent, right? That is where the methodology starts. The methodology does not start from taking the sample or why, from collecting the data. The methodology starts from taking consent. Don't start from why oh, I went, I took public transport and reached this place. No, this is not the consent. I walked through this deeply. No, it starts from your first interaction with the um, patients. So 
the first thing is taking consent then you can take that uh, you explain you, take, you took consent you explain the data uh, you explain the process and everything then you took data you have to talk about the various departments involved in this entire proceed <clears throat> oh, if you took help from the community medicine department don't ask help don't say that I took help from there. But if your community medicine department is involved, for example, you are t assessing the data, you are going to the community medicine OPD, or you are talking about your is related to vaccination, then Kintu you have to write about that department. So um, next, while you are writing, you are taking that and collecting the data. There is this is how much we'll collect. Now you ha have to talk about the various devices, the various instruments used. But you won't have to say how much you are taking, how much time you are running. Utna you don't have to write because this is a proposal. So you have to write these are devices you use you accordingly in the order. But you don't have to write their exact procedure. Next is uh, if there is any pro forma. Okay, if you are forming any pro forma or any questionnaire, you. <clears throat> Uh, if you are um, forming any schedule, you will have to talk about that. Also, mind you, I say not give uh, when you are submitting the proposal, uh, submit the informed consent form, pro forma, whatever you are using with it. Okay, but together make it one PDF and submit because it's better. You know, it, it's transparent. Also, if you are using any table while doing your research, if you are using any particular data or any criteria, ki if this criteria is met, then I will do the research. If this criteria will be met, I will do this, I will follow this path or any other classification. For example, there is Tidads, Bidads, which type of classification or various classifications are there for various diseases, right? Various criteria are there. Write that, okay? Write the entire criteria so the person can understand that this is the criteria and then you read, you, you, you will match with the criteria and then you will proceed, right? Then you write how you'll proceed after that. Next is sampling technique. As I said, you uh, there are various kinds. There's like a lot of, if you if you are a third, second, third year student, you know that there are various kinds of random sampling, non-random sampling, uh, various types. So accordingly, it will, your uh, um, Project will fall under one of those. You have to write that. The sample size, be very realistic with the sample size. Don't go overboard, mind you. You you can't you write it. Al al say you have to go to an OPD or if you are uh, thinking ki how many people can you um, take the data from one day. You know, so be realistic. Uh, write and sample size will vary. You know, your friend might have a sample size of 200 according to their project. You can have a sample size of 20 according to your project so don't get carried away inclusion criteria the inclusion criteria mind you for most projects there will be one inclusion criteria which is a must which is a key and everybody who gives consent okay and you can't uh, and in many cases also it's, it's about age 18 years so the but if you're doing a pediatric age group that's different but the consent part can do inclusion criteria mein hota hai for most projects they so have to take consent and apart from that inclusion criteria varies for <clears throat> Uh, according to the various um, projects involved, for example, it can be gender based, it can be age based, it can be disease based. Ki only these diseases uh, are in my inclusion criteria. Okay, so that is it. So, exclusion criteria, may I have written one good example. Ki do not provide who, exclusion, may the first people will be who do not provide informed consent or any other according to the project. So, they are immediately excluded. You can't take data from them randomly or samples from them randomly. Secondly, as I said, it will be disease based. Ki if this person is not having this disease, then they are excluded. Or the, if they are not doing this follow up, they're excluded. It can be according to your project. I, I can't say much about that. But these two uh, consent part can be, will be you know, try to include them in both inclusion and exclusion. And uh, uh, this is another key all investigations. It, you have to write this. I'm giving, these are examples. Okay, the dead ones are ones you have to write. Even that is like it's up to you, but it's better if you write that because it's written there. So all investigations might be done free of cost. You might take money. So that you have to write. Another is the you have to write key. It, it was approved by the institutional ethics committee, etc. etc. Because you don't have to give the ethics approval form submission immediately but you have to write it was approved by the institutional ethics committee also mention about the confidentiality of data that if if the data you're collecting will it be kept con it, you should keep it confidential it's not like you will give it away to people so write that next is the implications implications is very important because it is basically like everyone can just keep everything and just write read your implications don't make it a xerox copy of the uh, introduction implications basically mean ki what what importance will your um, research carry in the society? Why will ICMR give you their money? It's a lot, 50,000. 
it was less in my time so so yeah so uh, the thing is it can be two things right two main things one it will benefit the society in some way in a monetary way or in a healthcare based way so or it can lead to some new information coming out of it so you have to think one of these two is the bigger is most of the times it's one of these two and accordingly right okay because this is the catchy bar they will think okay this is benefiting the society this way this kit is not available yet this data is not available yet we can accordingly give resources according to this data suppose there's a new data you can say that accordingly we can give resources out of it or from my data this these results will come out and we can take new steps according to this okay this is the first thing another is why is it unique or not repeated it might happen that you will find a lot of it you you thought of a topic and there is a lot of it on the internet but you can say okay, it's not available in my state or it's not available in my country it's available other way other other places me and also it might happen that your topic is not anywhere me so it is unique that way so you have to these other you can don't try these subheadings but think of the implications with these subheadings ki you are giving somebody money unless it benefits the entire society or there is a good new information coming out or with that information you will take new steps which will benefit why will you give money so and if you see too much research paper say that uh, that it's not available in the country or it's not verified much so that's how you can write lastly references if you want i can literally make a video on references alag se because references is very important it's a vancouver style of referencing it is a citation style jahan pe every time you write something from the internet you have to write number 1 or number 2 so that someone in the references can go and see that number 1 and number 2 and be like oh this is from this link and they can go and verify it so it's a citation style jahan pe the reference number jita chhe what the reference number that is there in like in the references part you can see suppose it's number number 10 so number 10 you will go up and see in introduction implications objectives methodology in one of those number 10 will be there na maximum it is in uh, introduction so that number 10 from the references you will go and see okay so references from this number 10 she has used or he has used this or the ulta bhi uh, you see a line in introduction and you are like oh is this true i am not sure so you see beside it number 10 is written so you go to the references you see the link or you see the book name and you verify it so that is vancouver style it is very easy to use if you start from the very beginning but if you don't start from the very beginning it will be very difficult because later you will be like oh i have to write references but i don't know where my i have forgotten where i took that introduction ka line from where i have taken this objectives ka line from or the methodological line from so start from the very beginning the references every time you take a line for introduction or whatever save the link put one beside it or if you are writing like a rough project start beside it or one beside it and put it references me you can edit it later according to your way so that is vancouver style so this is it uh, so that's it guys so if you need videos on this topic or any other topic let me know in the comment section below and as i said if you need this ppt or you can do want to ask me any other questions one on one may my contact details are down below you can be free to ask and also comment if you like this video because it's a very chotu channel like a bachcha channel hai ye so if you comment it will help it grow and i'll keep coming up with more so yeah like share and subscribe kar dena and share it with your friends juniors seniors isko bhi chahiye and check out the other videos on my channel and yeah sab safe raho sab mask pehen ke raho ghar pe raho and yeah all the best thank you guys